Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about partnership dissolution without liquidation. But first, we have to make the distinction between dissolution and liquidation. So dissolution is basically just the end of the life of the partnership, while liquidation is the winding up of business affairs. So a business may still continue even with the dissolution of a partnership. For example, admission of a new partner would dissolve the old partnership and form a new partnership, but the business still operates normally. With liquidation, the business itself stops operating. Thus, it is safe to say that dissolution automatically takes place during liquidation, but not the other way around. A partnership may dissolve with or without liquidation. The focus of this video will be on the dissolution without liquidation. There are two main ways by which a partnership may be dissolved without liquidation. First is through the admission of a new partner, and second is through the death or retirement of a partner. Now we'll move on to accounting for admission of a new partner. When admitting a new partner, we use the bonus method. Three scenarios are possible when using this method. But first we need to define what a bonus method is. As the name suggests, a bonus is to be provided for partners. A bonus is an amount partners are willing to allow as additional credit to a partner's capital in excess of his capital contribution. It is basically a transfer of capital from one partner to another. Under this method, total contributed capital is assumed to be equal to the total agreed capital. In the first scenario, no bonus is given to any partner. So this means that the amount invested is equal to the capital credit granted to him. When the investment of a new partner is less than the capital credit granted to him, that means there is a bonus to the new partner. When the investment given is greater than the capital credit granted, the bonus is to the old partners. To illustrate these scenarios, we use the following information. So take for example the problem here. A and B's partnership had total net assets of 300,000 pesos. Their capital balances are equal to their agreed capital contribution of 40% and 60%, which is also their respective P&L ratios. So we need to record the admission of the new partner for each of the following scenarios. First is when partner C's investment of 100,000 is equal to the capital credit granted to him. Second is when he invests 100,000 but is granted the capital credit of 150,000. And third is when he invests 100,000 but receives a capital credit of 80,000 pesos only. So in the first scenario, his investment is equal to the capital credit, meaning no bonus is to be provided. So before C's admission, a has a capital of 120,000, B has a capital of 180,000 for a total of 300,000. So after C's admission, we see that there are no changes with A and B's capital balances and C has a capital credit of 100,000 equal to his investment. So the total capital balance now has increased to 400,000 pesos. To record the admission of C as a partner, we simply make a debit to cash for 100,000 and a credit to C capital for 100,000. The next scenario is one where C's investment is less than the capital credit granted to him. So this means there is a bonus to the new partner C. So to perform the bonus method, we have to make three columns. The first column would be dedicated to the total contributed capital or the investment. And then the second would be for the bonus. And then the third would be the total agreed capital or the capital credit granted to each partner. So for total contributed capital, A has 120,000 since it's 40% of 300,000 and B has 60% of 300,000 for 180 and C invested 100,000 for a total contributed capital of 400,000. And again, for a bonus method, we assume that TCC is equal to TAC, so that means your total agreed capital is also equal to 400,000. 
And then it was also given that the capital credit granted to C would be 150,000. So the difference would be the bonus to C, which is 50,000. The 50,000 will be allocated to partners A and B using their PL ratio, which is 40 60. So that means A will receive a reduction of 20,000 from its capital, and B will receive a reduction of 30,000, resulting to 100,000 agreed capital for A and 150 for B. So if there is a bonus to a new partner, we see that the balances of the old partners decrease and the balance of the new partner is greater than the actual investment made. To record the admission of C in this scenario, we simply make a debit to cash for 100,000 pesos and then a debit to A capital for 20,000 pesos, the amount of bonus, and B for 30,000, again, the amount of bonus. Debiting the capital balances would mean a reduction in them. And now we have to make a credit to C capital for 150,000 equal to his capital credit, which was granted. So the last scenario would be when the investment made by C is greater than the capital credit given to him. In this case, there is a bonus to the old partners. So again, you make three columns, TCC, bonus, and TAC. TCC would record the investment of C and the capital balances of A and B. And then for TAC, we record the capital credit granted to C, which is 80,000. The difference is negative 20,000 for C, which means there should be an additional capital balance for both A and B. Again, bonus should be allocated based on the partner's profit and loss ratios, which is 40% and 60% for A and B, respectively. So 40% of 20,000 would be 8,000, and 60% of 20,000 would be 12,000. So adding it up, we get 128,000 for A, 192,000 for B, and 80,000 for C. Again, you see that TCC is equal to TAC. And for bonus to old partners, old partners receive an increase in their capital balances. So to record the admission of C for this scenario, we have to make a debit to cash for 100,000 pesos and a credit to the capital balances of A, B, and C for the respective amounts. So A would have an increase of 8,000, which is the amount of bonus received, B, 12,000, again, the amount of bonus received, and C, for 80,000, which is the capital credit granted to him. So when a partner with withdraws or retires from the partnership, um, two possible scenarios arise. So first is when he sells his interest to outsiders or to the remaining partners, or when the partnership purchases his interest. So for the first scenario, we have this sum sample problem. So assuming A, B, and C has capital balances of 100,000, 200,000, and 300,000 respectively, and has a profit and loss ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1, and C withdraws and sells his interest to A and B, and A and B acquires his um, capital balance and splits them equally. Two scenarios arise. So first is when it is sold to the remaining partners and the second is when it is sold to an outsider. To record the first scenario, we simply debit C capital for 300,000 which is his capital balance and credit A capital and B capital for 150,000 each. So this is regardless of the price that was agreed on by A, B, and C among themselves. This is because um, any gain or loss is treated as a personal gain or loss of the partners and the partnership books is only interested in recording the transfer of um, capital balances from C to A and B. And then when, the, um, when C sells his interest to an outsider, we simply debit C capital for 300,000 and credit D capital for 300,000. Again, we do not care about the price since the partnership is only interested in the transfer of capital balances. In both cases, we see that there is no increase in the total um, partnership assets. And then, 
we have the sale to partnership. So when a partner sells his interest to the partnership, three scenarios may arise. So first is when the amount agreed on is equal to the capital balance. B is when the partnership pays for more than the capital balance. And C is when the partnership pays less than the, than the capital balance. So we have the sample problem. So basically the same given as earlier. And the scenario now is when C withdraws and is paid 300,000, 400,000, or 280,000 by the partnership. So let's discuss the first scenario first. So when C is paid 300,000 pesos, which is equal to its capital contribution. So this entry is very simple. It's basically debit C capital for 300,000 to close his balance and then credit cash or accounts payable, notes payable, or whatever assets the company used to pay him for the same amount. So the second scenario is when C is paid 400,000 by the partnership. So this is actually more than his capital balance of 300,000. So what we have to do here is debit C capital for his balance of 300,000 and the remaining 100,000 is to be divided between A and B according to their P and L ratio which is 1 is to 1. So A and B has a reduction of 50,000 each in their capital balances. So we need to debit that again. And then credit cash, notes payable, accounts payable, or whatever form of payment used by the company for 400,000 pesos. The last scenario is when the partnership pays 280,000 pesos, which is less than C's capital balance. So we need to debit C capital for 300,000 pesos and then credit cash or accounts payable, notes payable, or whatever form of payment for 280,000. And then the remainder of 20,000 should be divided between A and B again using their P&L ratio. This time we credit A and B capital since this is an increase in their capital. So they have 10,000 pesos each. So there you have it. I hope you learned a lot.